Hello and welcome to the Youth Initiative Scotland podcast. Thank you for joining us once again. We've got a great show coming up today. I really, really enjoyed this interview. If you'd like to hear more about what Youth Initiatives is doing just now, go to our website, youthinitiativescot.com. Follow us on Twitter at YISC underscore 2018. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Youth Initiative Scotland. We were joined on the show today by Laura Winnery. Laura has come up through YI. She tells us about her experience of growing up in Belfast in the 90s and all that that meant for the tail end of the troubles and seeing that in school and the sublime and the ridiculous and the funny and the scary and everything that that she encountered. She tells us about her journey in youth initiatives and and how they tackled some of the cross-community issues and how she was able to address them and continues to address them in her work now. Hope you enjoy the show. Thank you for joining us. Yes, here we go. Laura Winnery, I have been looking forward to doing this interview for a wee while. Laura is someone who brings a lot of joy to everybody she meets. Laura and I worked together for a couple of years in youth initiatives a few years back in Northern Ireland and she tells the worst jokes that I've ever heard and somehow still makes them funny. Um, Laura is a delight to be around. Laura is a good friend uh, and Delighted to have you on today, Laura. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Andy. You're awful kind. What an introduction. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, we've been, I've, I've had you on the list. I've had you on the list saying that's one that I need to get. So just before we get into it, tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Are you, how, what's life looking for you? What's life looking like for you just now in these mental times? Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, life's looking pretty, it's hard to explain, I think, um, and it's different since it began. So when lockdown started, I was one of the lucky ones that was put under the furlough scheme. Mm. Um, and it was a bit of a, in, in some way, it was a bit of a blow because your whole routine goes completely mm-hmm. out of the um, But I was quite motivated to do all these wonderful, amazing things and, you know, have a master's degree by the end of the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Mary Berry or Picasso, you know, all these new skills that you always wanted to actually do something about and never did. Um, and then after a week, I was just proud of myself for getting into bed in the morning. Um, <laughs> so, kind of stayed like that for the past while. I've been, you know, every day is get up, get out for a run, which is good. Um, my, my, um, Exercise routine has certainly went through the roof, which has mm. been really um, and pattern about them um, baking when I've never really baked before, and um, you you find yourself with random bits and pieces to do throughout the day. And I have went through. I'm currently living in my dad's, my what well, the house I grew up in, and I went through the attic to clear all my stuff. Because uh. I was there, like, oh, why have I kept all these? random letters and cards and toys and some opening up my memory box from 20 odd years ago so it's been fun in some way yeah 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 it's good it's just so weird some of the things you end up doing during the day that's um that's, it's, that is one of the blessings of it is that you get you do things that you wouldn't have done otherwise Absolutely. but it's a uh, it's strange good Good. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us your story. Um, where Where did you grow up? What was it? What was the area that you grew up in like? And whereabouts in Belfast is it? Yeah. So I grew up in an area called Dunmurray, which is um, in West Belfast, um, but situated um, in between the likes of areas like Pulglass, Clumbrook, and Lagmore. Um, the Murray was this little aspiring middle class area in the midst of it all. It was just a slag that I had gates on my driveway. Um, mm. <laughs> but by no means were we middle class, may I make that very clear. Um, my parents just worked very hard. Um, so I grew, I grew up in a lovely area, to be quite honest. And um, my parents knew everybody else's parents and all my friends, everyone knew one another. So it was quite a, a close 
community. So if you got in trouble, everybody knew. So you tended not to really get in the trouble. Um, and I went to the local primary school called St. Anne's and then made my way to a school called St. Louise's, which was right in the heart of the Falls Road. Mm. And past, um, one of the more contentious areas and a hot spot during the, the troubles. Um, my dad was from the Falls Road. Um, and it was, it was an incredible experience because St. Anne's was a lot less um let's just say working class let's just be blunt about it um and so moving in the the likes of st louise's um exposed me to family backgrounds that i wasn't really aware of actually i went mm -hmm. the whole way through mm -hmm. school really knowing anybody whose parents were separated or didn't talk to their family or anything like that um and so i was i was exposed to a whole new like life and culture and um, became a lot more street smart, I suppose. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you see, it was during, um, it was a hotspot during the Troubles. Was that when were you at school? And do you remember anything from the Troubles that, like, yeah, good during question. During your school time, yeah, a couple. Well, yeah, I suppose. So I went to school in the nineteen nineties, ninety four is when I was in primary school, and then two thousand and two is when I went to secondary school. Um, I suppose when I was like six, seven, eight, the end of the, the 1990s, um, the army were quite prevalent in our street and in our area. Um, I do remember seeing an army man just out in our garden, ducked behind a wall with his gun. Um, like inside your garden? Inside my garden. Um, oh. but it was done to me, it was normal because I've seen it on TV every single yeah. day. Yeah. Um, and we would have talked a lot of politics and, and news in our house. Um, and then we were out running around the streets and there was another big army jeep and guys got out with the guns and we just went up to him was like, here, mister, can we see your gun? <laughs> like, yeah, sure. And he like held it up and yeah. we were able to, I was like, can I hold that? And he's like, no. Hmm. Um, and then we had some, Cracking stuff was a brilliant story when we were in secondary school in St. Louis's. Um, you have to imagine some of the characters that I was in school with, just absolutely fab. Um, so out there, just so out there, and lots of fights. I went there, it was an all girls school, the biggest, apparently the biggest all girls Catholic school in Western Europe at right. the time. 2000 okay. of us, all in the one building. Um, so you can only but imagine. Um, so it was fights every day. It was great, actually, great entertainment. Um, but um, there was one day when um, two, actually the girls in my class, and for some reason there was a big tapestry, right, all thread and wool, that um, sat on the landing between the art department and the science department. Mm -hmm. And it was a glorious sunny day outside, and we all wanted to have class outdoors, and the teachers wouldn't let us. But just after lunch, um, the fire alarm went off. And the fire alarm had previously been going off for about six weeks every day, part because they were rerouting re all the fire alarms and resetting the schools huge. So it took about six weeks for them to like assess it. So every day, three times a day, the fire alarms would go off just to check them, and you would know it was a test, and that was grand. And this fire alarm went off, and everyone was like, mm, go again. And after about 20 seconds, it was still going off. And the teacher from the classroom next door put his th foot through the door of our classroom. He's like, it's a real fire. Get out. And we're like, oh my God, all this. <laughs> so we all just bumped it outside. It's class. Glorious sunshine running around. Um, but what had happened is this girl had taken a can of Lynx deodorant and put it up to the tapestry and just lighted it and the whole thing just went kaboof. It was right said science department, so it was like uh -huh. chemicals, roses uh -huh. and all sorts. Um and then when asked why she did it, she's like, I just wanted to see what would happen. <laughs> the whole school went in fire. But um a lot of people would have been like anti police, let's put it that way, anti established um and so the fire brigade came down, that was fine, they put the fire out and then the police had to come down, so there's about two or three big and the PS and I over here don't drive around necessarily in cars, it's in big jeeps. 
um, and so they came down in their big patrol jeeps and one of the girls beside me took it's a carton of suki and suki is a, is orange juice mm-hmm. in a in a carton and she just it was as if it was a petrol bomb and she just <laughs> threw it at the police jeep <laughs> I know it's a really random story but it's like what <laughs> why would you have done that for what reason um so it's just an example of some of the absolute yeah, crazy yeah. I'm the go to school with. Um, but again, people that grew up in the shadow of the troubles, I suppose, and had seen all this people throwing stuff at the police mm-hmm. all day. It was normal, normal behaviour. So mm-hmm. they just saw the police who were coming in to help and had something in hand and lobbed it at them. Um, it's a key bomb. Yeah. <laughs> Strange times, strange Aye. times, we, strange times. I know it's it's fascinating. It's because fa- um, I grew up around the same time, obviously, and it's like I thought I had some sort of idea of what was going on because you see things in the news and all that. But it, see, when you when I hear people's lived experience of it, it's it's um, it's strange. However, as soon as you said there was a tapestry in the school. I knew exactly what was going to <laughs> what that story was going to involve. Um, no. So th- th- there are some things that go across cultures. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, uh, interesting. Like, so, so what was your school like? How did you get on at school? Then did you enjoy school? It sounds like you did. Yeah, I. Do you know I love school. We had, we had a blast. I grew up in a house with three older brothers, um, yeah. and. I was going to survive in a, a school of all girls, but um, absolutely loved it. We did every day. We had something to laugh about. There was a good squad of us who were who were friends and just made it really fun for each other. Um, and it was an incredible school as well. I just really cared about you, and so I found that as a place that just helped me to um, just grow in lots of different skills academically. I was all right, but nothing exciting. Um, but got really involved in lots of other I mean, drama and sport and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. and it was it was a really yeah they always say your school years are your best years and i would have to agree mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool at what point then at what point did you meet uh, youth initiatives yeah well so one of my three brothers um was heavily involved in youth initiatives for many years and it was just always something that i'd heard of but didn't know much about Carl would just every so often be like, yeah, I'm away up the YI. I I have no idea what that is. Um, But there's a 10 year age gap between myself and Carl. um, And as an annoying little sister would do, he was like, can I come with you? Everywhere Mm -hmm. brothers were going, I just wanted to go with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was always told no. And then one day, Carl, I was like, what are you doing tonight? He says, I'm going up the YI. He says, can I come with you? No one, it was going to be no. And for some strange reason that day went, yeah, like, oh, I've made it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so up I went. Now I snuck in. I was a bit younger than the um, age bracket that you were meant to be. So why I works with 11 to 14s on one program, 15 to 18s on another. And I was 13 at the time, but Carl was going to the 15 to 18 year program. So I right. kind of snuck into the older group. Um, and it was brilliant actually, it was just a really great atmosphere, there was an amazing welcome um, when we came through the door. In fact we were late and they kind of stopped what they were doing and announced that Carl Winnery had walked through the building um, and he did this whole like, yeah look at me, sort of, I'm here, mm. everyone's mm. and cheering. And then they'd, they'd spotted that I was behind him, they're like, oh and his wee sister's here too, so I just copied Carl and did the same thing, but yeah. <laughs> um, but it was a great, it was a great evening. Um, and in fact, they were talking about it was one of their faith nights. They were talking about God and having a relationship with Him. Um, and I was like, oh, interesting, but cool, up for it. Um, and everybody came over to, to speak to me afterwards and make me feel welcome. Um, and I think two or three people asked me the same question. They said, "You want to come back next week?" And I'd never thought about coming back next week. Um, I felt that that was an invitation to do so. I was like, um, yeah, I, I will come back next week. 
and you know there there was fast forward 13 years later and i was still involved mm -hmm. cool cool um so what were the first obviously people inviting you back was one, one of them but what were some of the first things that you like liked about it um and and made you keep coming back and back I suppose the atmosphere of the place, um, it really was a place of welcome um, and there was a sense of no matter who you were, you were welcome to be there, um, mm. even if you didn't know anyone. There was a lot of fun as well, um, it was just a bunch of teenagers having having a good time, um, enjoying themselves in a really safe environment. Um, and there was, a, there was a bit of wackiness about it. There was games that were really stinking but really good fun <laughs> and coke can like kind of coke through somebody else's sock and like in the tail out of it <clears throat> nappy and like really gross things that were a bit strange but really good fun um but there was just a, a sense of people looking out for you and caring for you as well that, that came around very quickly um you never felt that nobody that somebody didn't want you to be there or that nobody cared about whether you were there or not um people cared that you were there people cared that you were doing well um and people cared that you came back and, and felt like you mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. you said there um the, the the first night you went up it was it was a it was a faith night um but were you coming from a perspective of believing in god or something like that but you also said that no matter who you were you were welcome like how how does how do those two things jive together? Yeah, do you know, that's a story in itself. Um, I so I was about thirteen at the time, and the faith was important to me when I was a kid. We we our house um we taught to say our prayers and we were brought to mass each week. But God was a concept, and um, He mm. was there there, but that was about it. Um, an aunt of mine would have encouraged me in my faith maybe a bit more. Um and would have brought me away to different um, faith trips or pilgrimages and, and places to prayer, places of prayer. Um, and so it was something that was important to me, but I didn't know much about. Um, and from being involved in YI, that really changed. Um, I do remember just, it was honestly two weeks before I went up these initiatives, that um, I'm from a Catholic background and going to Mass on a Sunday was a tradition. So I was at Mass um, on a Sunday and I had just this notion at the end of it, like if God is really who I'm being told he is, there's got to be more than this 45 minutes on a Sunday. Hmm. It was just a thought and it disappeared and that was it. Um, but I, I, a very vivid memory of, of that taking place and then lo and behold two weeks later I'm up in youth initiatives and then two weeks after that again um, there was a residential that was taking place and I was invited on the residential and so I went and um, for the weekend the content of the different sessions that we were doing and amongst games and having the crack essentially um, was looking at relationships and that was relationships between um, ourselves and our parents, ourselves and our friends, romantic relationships, etc, etc. But um, more importantly, relationship with God. And the very first thing that was said on the Friday night when we arrived was, I don't care who you are, where you're coming from, but no one is leaving this weekend without deepening or starting a relationship with God. There's a sense that somebody had. I was like, that sounds good and God's important to me but like but I can't really see myself being one of those mm -hmm. sort of folks that takes this any more seriously than the next person um, and then throughout the course of the weekend hearing that like a relationship with God is something that could be had and um, something that much like other relationships in our lives where you talk to someone and they talk back um, you, you can have that with God so that's bizarre but um throughout the course of the weekend i really i think experience is the word i really experienced um a very real connection with god for the first time um and i believe it was the the power of the holy spirit just 
awakened a, a sense within me that, that this is real and this is something that's tangible and something that um, I can do something about. I, I need to respond to this and react to the fact that God, the creator of the world, actually loves me and mm. wants to have a relationship with me. Um, and that really just started a whole new chapter in my life. And I wanted to know more and got really captivated at that moment in time and picked up the Bible and started to read it and prayed every day and just saw an actual relationship with God develop. And it's been, I still have it. Mm -hmm. I still have it. It's powerful. Good. Good. Could you give me your top three why I moments if you can boil it down to three if there's like three standout memories it could be profound things it could be funny things or I mean there's hundreds and thousands it's really hard um I think off the off the top of my head I think I've got like one that I really loved something that was really funny um and something that was profound so um there was a why I assume is for doing a camp every two years. Mm -hmm. um, I lived and breathed why I camp. Just loved it. It was four days away. It was like why I on steroids. It was all your mates. <laughs> intense. It was always raining. Um, but it was just class. It was just so much fun. And um, I have been on three why I camps and then on my I must have been my third or fourth one. Um, I was asked to be the MC for the camp, and it was like the most amazing thing ever. It was like I'd struck gold. I just loved it. Um, and it was myself and Daniel Calderon, who was a gap year, <laughs> been a gap year from Costa Rica, and we just had so much fun putting all the work in beforehand, and then just guiding people through why camp experience it was just class. Um. And it was it's a an opportunity for people to really grow in friendships, but get away from life and its norm and opportunities to develop a relationship with God and also just sit and soak in like sleep in puddles because it was always raining and oh, it was just brilliant. I just loved it. So that's definitely one the way I can't mm -hmm. experience. Um, I do have a really, for some reason, one of my first memories is, um, or not first memories, but first things come into my head about a YI memory is actually to do with Curtis Harmon. Um, and it was in the old PC centre, the old project centre, which was an old swimming pool owned by the army general back in the, God, the about 60s or something. And his, lived his own swimming pool um, they had a cover on it to make it a floor so it was we could use it um, as a meeting place but if you lifted up this little like trap door on the floor it was a big storage but it was like the access yeah. room no, it was the swimming pool yeah yeah I was down there um, many a time <laughs> oh you could get lost um, but long story short Curtis was being Curtis at the time and um, being boisterous and probably showing off about something you'll not mind me saying that and um, was walking backwards and talking to someone at the same time and the, the door <laughs> the underneath was open and all of a sudden you seen him and the next minute oh, he was gone he just like completely fell down the trap door and it was one of the best things you could have ever hoped to witness <laughs> i don't know why it's one of my memories but it's just, you just laughed and laughed and laughed for oh hours on that one um but also it's just a glimpse of just the silly things make yeah, well, yeah. silly memories. But it is it was it's the culture that we had up there in the PC. Like it was just you were there to have fun and you were there to like you get laughed at, you laugh with people, like but it wasn't it was always like everybody wanted the best for each other and everybody wanted each other to do well and all that. And when something like that happened, someone like Curtis um Oh, I mean, obviously, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but, uh, but things like that were just, uh, they were like funny times 10. Do you know what I mean? I don't know, don't know why, just because it was like just used there. Yeah. Um, oh, brilliant. Yeah. And there's hundreds of those wee stories, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. hundreds of them. Um, 
then again, I suppose like a, a third key memory is my crosslinks experience. Mm. Crosslinks is our, is our, I still say our, and mm. we. Um, cross community performing arts program and um it was just brilliant for thousands of reasons but some key memories of that um involve um doing show pieces at big events and conferences um so every so often we were like let out of school to go to this big community relations or funding or political conference and put on a piece from one of our shows that um and somewhat showed, you know, the difference between Catholic young people in West Belfast and Protestant young people in East Belfast and how they can come across the divide and be friends with one another. Um, that always had a bit of wit and humour about them. And that was just really cool. It's the amazing experiences of um, travel and broadening your horizons um, and being involved in those sort of big events that you're like, oh, these people actually care about young people and they want to, to see a difference made in their lives. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, and one of our, yeah, I would say one of our greatest shows um, that we did uh, was called Made in Belfast. And what year would that have been? 20, I don't know, 16, 15 maybe? Um, needless to say. Um, 12, I, I was there. Because of my final year uni. Okay, and um, we based that on the current affairs that were going on in Belfast at the time and what had happened was the Union flag, the British Union flag, flew above Belfast City Hall um, different days of the year and nobody noticed it had been flying there from day dot and no one really noticed nor paid attention until a um, a bill was passed within City Hall to take the Union flag down and only flat on designated days. Right. Um, okay. This then started a huge uproar right across mostly Belfast, and the media really got massively involved. And this this um, vote took place on the Monday, and crossings met every Monday night, and. Um, there was protests around Belfast, there was small pockets of rioting that were taking place um, over this decision and it just, it all just kind of got out of hand and we had met um, brought our, the young people from West Belfast over to East, they run our normal crossings programme and that evening we just talked about what was going on, like the flag was coming down and um, people were getting really upset about this and we had a conversation and the young people got really involved and it was amazing to see um, young people caring about this and caring about mm -hmm. their local community and the impact it was having. And we decided to base the whole show around Belfast at the time. And even when the young people were getting on the bus to go back home, there was bricks thrown at the bus and mm -hmm. there was young people were like, oh, you know, there's somebody from another community in our area. I was like, you didn't, this didn't bother you yesterday, but all of a sudden, um, and so one of the, the great pieces um, during that show was we were always talking about, you know, what do you, what do you think about the flag coming down? How does it make you feel? And what do you think about the flag coming down? How does it make you feel? And then we were, we were just like, I wonder how the flag feels. <laughs> it's, about, it's coming down. Nobody cares about it. Nobody's asked its opinion. Um, it personified the flag and a whole scene on the flag got him for therapy and counselling and <laughs> listening to me and no one's talking to me about how I feel. Really uh, excellent. I, I remember because I, I was there. I think I might have been driving the bus that night, but uh, I was there yeah. then, and I was around. I, I was involved cross links a lot more in my first year, I th but I was still involved heavily the second year. But um, I remember like seeing that scene. <laughs> for the first time and just thinking it was just genius writing um but we did the show in belfast city hall eh? we were able to get the yeah ashley the, holmes absolutely i did herself that year as the as the director and the the script writer like it was an incredible show and doing it in city hall was amazing as well yeah, and that was amazing that was great yeah, that really was, 
that was funny. You know, the first time I heard that, or that we've made the flag a character, and, and the flag's going in for the NFA because he's not wanted. Does it feel? Um, it's it's and it's just such a creative way to engage young people in that conversation, and then to hang me. I I I love that. I love that about Crosslinks. What it does. Cool. Mm -hmm. So what's um what's why I meant for your life? Where are you because of it and where might you be without it? Great question. I can an actually there's two questions there. Mm. Um I can answer one, I can't answer the other. Um because I have no idea where my life would be mm. without why I I, do, I cannot answer that. And I've tried to think about it before and just not wanted to mm. because mm -hmm. um but where am I because of it? I um, have incredible friends, that friendships that have lasted 15 years. I um, have a really rich faith life that without it, I really wonder what, how others who um, don't have a relationship with God, like how they find purpose and meaning and joy and um, make sense of the world. I, I don't really know how you can do it without him. Um, and I've got incredible rich life experiences. I've travelled the globe with YI from um, the Middle East to America to Africa. Um, it's been incredible. Um, and it awakens in me a passion for politics. I got really mm. involved in politics here in Belfast. Um, I've grown in many, many different life skills, um, from how to have a conversation with someone to um, how to pitch a tent, you know, they just, <laughs> to, to mason the things you learn without realizing you're learning them. Um, and yeah, I've, I've found myself, uh, I worked for YI for many years afterwards um, on their faith development program and I just wanted to. And in, in somewhat, we create the why experience that I had for other young people, and just let them know that somebody cares about them and sees potential in them, and give them space to connect with God and connect with others, um, and just grow. Um, and that's something that I care about doing um, with the rest of my time and days. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, so, what do you just say a little bit? What, what do you do now with the orcas now? Yeah. Um, well, currently I work with um, an organisation called Alpha, and Alpha runs the Alpha course, which is a opportunity and introductory course to um, faith and to who God is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. Um, and so with Alpha Northern Ireland, um, I look after the um, youth programme and our Alpha in the Catholic context, and it's been mm. um, I've been with Alpha for the past two years. And it's been incredible to see other people just get engaged in the conversation around faith and what it means to them and to bring that into schools and give people an opportunity to discuss that in school in a really relaxed and free environment. Um, to see churches um, outreach and open their doors to new people um, has been amazing as well. So I've been really loving that work. Good. Cool. Um, two last questions to finish. When are you coming to visit YI Scotland? And what's your favourite joke? I will come and visit YI Scotland once these restrictions are lifted. Mm. <laughs> I'm over. Absolutely. Would love to get involved in YI Scotland and the work that you are doing there. Um, particularly in your in the schools. I base quite heavily in schools at the moment. Um so yeah, whenever whenever we can make it happen, I'm there. Do a mini Good old Brigham. Um, and uh, favourite joke? Um, there's many. Um, but I've normally started every routine with the same one, and that's uh, what biscuits can fly. Don't know. We play in months. <laughs> I don't know why I said I don't know. I, I did know. <laughs> You've heard it's not the first it. time I've heard that joke. <laughs> <laughs> we plain ones um laura thanks very much for your time um, it's been really really inspiring talking to you um you've clearly clearly got a heart for 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 people and for for the work that you've been doing and cross community work and 
politics and and everything and and i always enjoy spending time with you and talking to you so thank you for your time and wish you all the best in this lockdown and maybe we'll see mary berry or picasso coming out at some point soon the longer this goes cheers thanks andy i really enjoyed it it's been a real pleasure thanks laura god bless